Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadia and Sands. This, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff. And today we are talking about visual effects compositing in Adobe After Effects. Now, I understand that visual effects come in all various shapes and sizes, and obviously we're not gonna be able to cover every single thing today. But in today's lesson, we are going to be resurrecting an old video that I did years ago called Young Guns, which is about a group of kids playing on a playground. They're playing finger guns, and then all of a sudden the finger guns turn into real guns and madness ensues. There's explosions and yada, yada, yada. And I remember, back in 2008 or whenever that was, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. It was right when Action Essentials from Video Copilot came out and I was super stoked on it. But since then, since 2008, the technology and all the effects and tracking and all that stuff have vastly improved. And so now in 2020, we are going to resurrect the idea behind that video. And this is what we're going to be creating today. Bullets are being fired at me. There's a fire happening behind the wall and I am firing my pistol at the fake bad guys. But unfortunately, my pistol right here runs out of ammo and I have to get the machine gun out to keep them at bay, but one of them has a grenade, they toss it my direction, and I have to run away before it kills me. Real exciting stuff, and while I don't consider myself a visual effects artist, I do know enough about visual effects to at least teach you how to do it on YouTube, which is exciting, I guess. So most of the elements that we're going to be using in today's tutorial are coming from actionvfx.com. By the way, they are having a huge Black Friday sale, so if you are looking to pick up some of these action essential elements to throw into your arsenal, now would be a really good time to buy. Link in the video description below if you wanna go check those out. 2K ProRes, 4K ProRes, all super high quality assets. They are a great company. We're also going to be using some stuff from Invato Elements. Again, link in the video description below and just pulling a couple things off of Google. So if you don't want to buy stuff, you can find stuff on the internet. There is a lot of stuff out there for you. So I'm going to cover all of our bases today, how to kind of maneuver around assets that are keyed or not pre-keyed and how to kind of get them into your scene and all of my little tips and tricks to make this otherwise very boring scene look a little bit cooler with some color grading and some visual effects applied. So I hope you guys are ready. I am ready. Open up After Effects because we are getting started right now. All right, guys, After Effects is open and down on my timeline. I've got a very short clip from the longer clip I showed earlier in this video, and we're just going to be working with this today. I'm going to show you a couple little tips and tricks that will help you on your way to visual effects compositing. Uh, tip number one, always have your lower back hanging out of your hoodie when you do a visual effects shot. Number two, you're going to want to shoot in a flat color profile because what we're going to do later is we're going to add multiple layers of color correction, and you're going to want all the visual effects to kind of match everything. So if you're shooting in a baked in color profile, the chances of you being able to match those visual effects to the profile are actually really low, but if you shoot in a flat color profile, you have more metadata, you have more dynamic range, and you can match all of the visual effects a little bit more. So my recommendation, shoot in a flat color profile. I shot this in S-Log3. And basically what we're gonna do is we are going to grade everything into one uniform adjustment layer. So I'm gonna put that in right now just so we can reference it. So new adjustment layer, and I'm going to add Lumetri color to that adjustment layer. I'm gonna to go to creative and I'm going to browse for a LUT. And I'm going to add the LUT from the movie 1917 and I will include a link to get all of these LUTs, all of these Hollywood cinematic LUTs in the video description below. Uh, this is a really, really useful tool for pretty much everything, but especially for something like this. So I'm going to apply the 1917 LUT to my adjustment layer. And now you'll see it's already instantly looking a lot better. And if we wanted to, we can just add a little bit of additional contrast, just like so and maybe a little bit more saturation. And this is just going to be our reference color layer, but we're gonna leave it off for a majority of the time, all right? So that's tip number two, uh, besides your lower back hanging out, you're gonna want to uh, shoot in a flat color profile. And tip number three, if you're curious, is to shoot on a tripod because the last thing you wanna do is spend a tremendous amount of time tracking and then doing all this stuff. It's just gonna end up eating into a lot of your time. And while, again, like I said, I'm not a visual effects artist, but I did that whole little beginning scene in roughly two hours, okay? It took me two hours to get there. I shot it on a tripod and then I added in camera shake in post, which will allow me to really spend time on just making sure the VFX look good and not on tracking. So tip number three, shoot on a tripod. And then tip number four is going to be to add your visual effects. So in my project, I have a bunch of stuff from actionvfx.com. Again, link in the video description below if you guys wanna go check out some of this stuff. But I'm going to drop in this fire and I'm just gonna put it right down here 
and kind of match it in my scene to the perspective. And while I'm adding in this visual effect element, I'm going to turn this on 3D in After Effects. I'm going to make sure that my rotation and everything is matching the perspective of my scene. You can see this tree is kind of like inward on a 45 degree angle. So I'm not gonna wanna have my visual effect uh, off to the opposite side. That's not gonna look good. I want to match the perspective as much as possible. And I'm going to just scale this down and get it exactly to where I need it to be with the fire at the base of this tree. That's what we're gonna be doing here. Different than the video you saw in the beginning, but that's okay. And now I'm going to use various blend modes to make this look just a little bit better in my scene. So I'm going to turn this from normal. I'm going to turn it on screen because with anything fire or like illuminated elements, I always like to use screen. It just looks a little bit better. And then I'm going to add a Lumetri color onto this layer. And I'm actually going to desaturate it to match the saturation of the rest of my scene around it. Because we shot in a flat color profile, I'm just gonna make sure that this is desaturated enough to match the surroundings because later we're gonna turn back on our color correction and then we're going to kind of correct the correction grading into the LUT. I know that sounds a little bit confusing, but basically make your effects match the flatness of the video that you shoot it until later when we then change it. Don't worry about it. All right, so I'm gonna turn this color grade off and I'm gonna make sure that looks pretty good to me. Now, I know what you guys are thinking, but Ian, you passed the fire right at the beginning. Yes, okay, so the fire is now inside of my body. And so the next tip I'm gonna give you guys is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your background and foreground elements are separated enough to make this believable. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of run through and make sure that my body is completely cleared of the fire, which is right about here. I'm going to duplicate my original video footage, put it on the top, trim this layer back by hitting Alt and the right bracket to trim the layer back. And now I'm going to use Roto Brush 2 to just roto myself in front of this fire. And it's super easy. I'm gonna double click on the layer, come up here to Roto Brush 2, paint in where I want to capture, hold down Alt and click around where I don't want to capture. There you go, making sure that this little crevice is looking nice because you actually will see the fire there. I'm going to turn this from standard to best and also enable motion blur right here at the beginning. Make sure that everything is looking good, which it is, and I'm gonna hit control and the right arrow and go frame by frame. And I really only have to mask where my body is here, so I'm not really gonna worry about like my head, but I am gonna worry about the lower half of my body here. So control and the arrow, frame by frame, just making sure that we are painting in what we want to be in front of that fire. And again, I'm doing this very quick and dirty. Uh, you guys should absolutely spend more time on this than I am, but this is just the basics. All right, there we go, looking good. Now I'm gonna hit freeze, come back over to my composition and ladies and gentlemen, just like magic, my body is now blocking the fire and we can see the fire right here in this little arm crevice. So this is just giving the illusion that this is real, right? The whole point of this tutorial is gonna make sure that you're getting the illusion that this is real. So we are off to a good start so far. The next thing I wanna add is some bullet holes to the wall back here. So I'm gonna to go to my project and grab this wall hit front and drop that onto my scene. And now you can see that this asset is actually not pre-keyed or pre-matted. So if you have an asset like this, there is a very simple solution. You're gonna come right up here to effect and go to channel and go to set matte, okay? and then change this from alpha channel to luminance. And now all of a sudden, like magic, your black background will go away and it will allow you to kind of put this asset where you want it to go. So I'm gonna scale this down. So it's relatively small. Bring it over here somewhere on the wall. And I'm gonna put it right outside of my elbow here. And again, I'm going to turn it on 3D and make sure that the perspective matches what I'm trying to do. The last thing you want is for an asset to look all wonky in 3D. So we're gonna put it right about there. That looks good. And I'm gonna wait till my arm clears and then start the asset animation there. And this one goes a little bit slow. So I'm gonna to go to time, time stretch and speed this up by 100%. So it's going in double speed. There you go. So this is looking like obviously like a massive bullet hole. So maybe we need to scale this down just a little bit more. Maybe at six, 6% 6 scale. That looks good. All right, great. Now let's add a bullet hole to the wall. So this one I just got on Google. I just searched for bullet hole concrete and this is what came up. So I'm literally just gonna zoom in here on any one of these guys. And I'm gonna take my pen tool and I'm just going to very, very roughly mask around this bullet hole in the concrete. Again, we don't need it to be perfect. And now I'm going to move this bullet hole to where my little wall hit goes and I'm gonna put it underneath and I'm going to shrink it down. Let's see, all right, so the bullet hole starts from right here. So I'm just gonna put it right about there and we'll trim this layer back and we will start at one frame after the animation starts. 
There you go. So I have a bullet hole. I know it's really pixelated or whatever, but if we zoom out here, uh, you can see that now I have a bullet hole that is appearing nicely in the wall uh, and there's some dust coming out and everything looks great. So. The other thing I'm going to recommend as a tip and trick is to blur things that are farther in your scene than others and also give them some color correction to match your surroundings. Again, this is a gray concrete wall. We don't really want any of this color around the outside to be showing. So I'm going to add a Lumetri color to this bullet hole and I'm just going to desaturate it. That's all I'm gonna do. 45% saturation from where it was and that's blending in a lot nicer. And I'm also going to hit M on the keyboard to bring up my mask properties and tool this down and I'm going to feather it by two pixels and I'm going to set the mask expansion to negative three pixels so it goes inward and now we don't see as much of the artifacts. And on top of that, I'm also going to add a fast box blur to this bullet hole and I'm going to set the blur radius to two and that will blur it just enough to maybe make it convincing in the background of my scene. That is looking pretty good for bullet hole number one. And now what you're gonna wanna do is kind of just repeat this process a few different times. Now I will say when you use a set matte function, just like we did on the wall hit, it's not a simple duplicate like you would think and a moving of the assets because you have to set your new um, wall hit you have to set the track mat to the layer itself. So this is on layer two now. So we just have to set this from number four to number two, and that will solve all of our problems. And now we can just kind of take this and offset it a bit. And maybe we'll put a bullet hole here and we'll duplicate it one more time. Move this over, set the mat to be the layer that we need it to be. And I will move this down to here. And of course, because we want to keep everything nice and organized, I'm going to highlight all of these layers, go to my layer color and turn it to something uniform so that I know that all of these are bullet hits and bullet holes. There you go. Now you see we have three bullet holes kind of populating behind me as if someone is trying to shoot me as I'm running. So now this is all looking really good to me. The last thing I wanna add into my scene is a nice little layer of ground fog down here. So I'm going to grab a ground fog asset from Action VFX, and I'm going to just pull it down here, come up to effect, channel, set matte, switch it over to luminance, and now I'm going to change that blend mode in my project from normal to add, which will give it a nice little fog effect right down here in the ground. Again, I'm going to turn it on 3D and just make sure that the perspective matches. This is very, very important. You're always gonna wanna make sure that your perspective matches. Otherwise, something's just gonna look off and you're not gonna know what it is, but it's gonna be your perspective. So again, we can just tuck this fog layer underneath my rotoscope body layer that we already did. Uh, just to, you know, give it that little element of realness. Uh, you can see that like my body runs through it, but it kind of looks like I'm running into the fog. So that's not really something I'm going to worry about right now. And maybe just for fun, I'm also going to add in a layer of dust particles into my scene. Again, effect set matte. We're going to set that to luminance. And now you can kind of see that there are a bunch of dust particles floating around in my scene. And these will be more apparent once we start the color grade phase, because where there is fire, there is dust and smoke little scientific tip, I guess. I, am, I a, am I a scientist? Is this science? Anyways, now we have these particles that are kind of floating in the air. And now guys, it is time to enable our color correction layer that we did from earlier. And now what we're gonna do is just kind of make micro adjustments to the things that need it, right? Like this fog layer looks way too intense with the color grade on. So what I'm gonna do is just turn this fog down in opacity from 100 to I don't know, 55? Yeah, that looks good. If I turn it on and off, you can see it actually is doing a lot. Uh, it's subtle though, it's subtle. That's what we want out of this whole thing is subtlety. Uh, but you can see here clearly our wall hits are a vastly different color than our wall and that just doesn't make any sense at all. So what we're gonna do is we are going to add a Lumetri color to this wall hit. I'm going to put it above my fast box blur and I'm going to desaturate it a pretty considerable amount. Yeah, maybe right about there, 45 looks decent. I'm going to turn the highlights down to about negative 50. I'm going to increase the shadows maybe here to about 30. And I am going to turn the opacity down of the entire layer uh, by a pretty decent amount as well, maybe to 80%. And now that we've done that, I can take this Lumetri color and I can copy and paste it onto my other bullet holes. And also turn the opacity down of all my other bullet holes to 80%. Again, keeping it consistent across the board. And now my bullet holes match uh, my scene a lot better, or at least my wall hits match my scene a lot better. 
Uh, my particles up here are a little crazy, so I'm actually just going to apply a fast box blur to that. Uh, I'm done using Gaussian blur, by the way. Fast box blur is the truth. We'll just blur that by two. That looks nice. It's getting rid of some of the artifacting around my edges there. There you go. And now that's looking pretty good for about 10 minutes worth of work. And you guys can come in here and you can refine it over and over and over again. And you can make small micro adjustments. Maybe we should blur the fire just a little bit, maybe one point on a fast box blur. And then we can come in here and obviously add some camera shake, which will really sell everything a lot more. So let's do that real quick. Adjustment layer. I'm gonna type in camera shake and I'm going to use the uh, Red Giant Universe camera shake plugin. Master amount down to 15 and frequency down to three. And that's looking a lot better. It's just some nice, subtle, action-y type camera shake. We have our bullet holes kind of happening here in the wall. We've got our tree on fire. We've got dust particles floating around. And you can keep adding and adding to your heart's content, but the whole point is to not overdo it and to make it subtle enough to where it can be believable. And now what I would do if I were you is I would actually go in and add another layer of color correction over the top by adding another adjustment layer. And I'm going to use uh, Red Giant Looks. Let's just pick a random one. I don't know, Bunker makes sense for what we're doing right here. It's kind of a war film. So we'll add a Bunker LUT onto the top of this and I will turn the strength down to mix it with our other layer. Just, it's gonna help glue everything together just a little bit more, a little bit nicer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have created a nice little visual effects composite out of some random shot that I got down the street of me running behind a tree and firing a fake gun like an absolute moron. And if you guys are curious about the grenade from the long example, let me just show you that real quick. Basically, what I did was I used a debris explosion uh, from Action VFX, and I masked out the tree and the sign. And then I also used Roto Brush 2 to mask myself in front of that explosion. So it looks like it's coming from behind me. So that explosion kind of happens here. Looking really good. Uh, made sure that the perspective made sense, made sure that the color correction made sense so that when I turned on my color layer, uh, everything matched and looked really nice. I also changed the sign to something really crappy. I thought it would be better, but hey, Anyway, back to the explosion. And then when the grenade comes in, I use this asset from Envato Elements, uh, which is a very slow moving grenade, kind of like throwing it through the scene. But what I did was actually change the perspective. You can see the grenade coming right here from the left-hand side of the screen, changed the perspective, and I kind of animated the position to make it look like it was being thrown behind the tree. And I also masked the grenade once it got to the tree so that the tree covers it up. And then the explosion happens on the back half. So here is that shot in real time, just so you guys can see, because my computer is absolutely struggling trying to play all this stuff stuff, but that is how I did the little grenade bit. But like I said earlier, most of these assets came from actionvfx.com. They are an amazing company, super high res elements that you can use in your visual effects compositing, action movie compositing journey. Again, they are having a crazy Black Friday sale. I believe it's something like 55% off of like most of the stuff on their website. So that is a huge pickup. Again, link in the video description below, links to Envato Elements and all the other stuff that I found in this tutorial in the video description below, including a link to the video co-pilot effects console, which I get asked about all the time, control and spacebar on your keyboard, and then you can search for stuff in After Effects. That one's free. So just download that because that'll save you a bunch of time. Hey, we learn a lot of stuff here at Learn How to Edit Stuff. Does the name make sense? I think so. Well, that about does it today for me, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please consider doing so. It's free for you and it's awesome for me. I have a bunch of tutorials on my channel in Adobe Premiere and After Effects and a bunch of fun stuff. So if you're not subscribed, hey, welcome to the family. If you are subscribed, thank you for sticking around for this long. I truly appreciate it. There are a lot of links in the video description below to help you, to help me. If you wanna connect with me on social media, join the Discord, you wanna just help me out for no reason. All of that stuff is in the video description below. Thank you guys sincerely for watching this video and other videos, and I will see you next time.